Hi, everyone. I'm Mandy Bailey from Yahoo Entertainment. Thank you for joining us for another conversation at Build Series. Our guests are three of the returning favorites from TLC's hit home makeover show, Trading Spaces, which is back Saturday night after a brief 10-year hiatus. Before we bring out host Paige Davis and designers Genevieve Gorder and Doug Wilson, let's watch a trailer for the new Trading Spaces. This spring, the mother of all design shows is back. Are you ready to trade spaces? <laughs> Cheers to being back. Cheers. We're back. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, what? I got a zhuzh girl. I have no idea who I am. How did he? I'm really proud. You're not humble at all. Oh, I mean, look at it. <laughs> so this is your first line. Really. You can work literally through the night. That's exactly what we needed. On this episode of Trading Spaces, two sets of neighbors trade houses for two days, two rooms, two days, and only $2,000 each. The journey is about to begin. Do you have the spirit? Yay! Yay! That's what Trading Spaces is all about. I'm just not another pretty face. <laughs> oh, time's up. I can't wait to see what the final reaction's gonna be. Open your eyes. Oh my god! <laughs> I like Are you ready to trade spaces? <laughs> Guys! Lock your doors! Lock your doors! That's so serious! <laughs> Lock your doors. They're here, everyone. Let's hear it. Trading spaces. We're so happy the show is back. Saturday night. Um, now, what I heard is that the cast did not know that the show was going to be revived until TLC announced it to the world. Is that really true? You heard correctly. <laughs> Correct. Absolutely. And what, what were each of your reactions? Were you immediately like, yes, sign me up? Or did you have any concerns? I did. You were very concerned. I was concerned because I think we were the first ones to do this kind of television. And you can only be the first once, right? And we also built this like beautiful thing that everyone highly, highly regarded. And so we didn't have any information about what this was going to be, who was going to be in it, how they were going to do it. Were, even, were we even asked back? So my concern was I didn't want to tarnish the perfection. Yeah, we're very <laughs> protective over this show. And um, I know that Paige and I have, have talked um, quite often about what the show is about and making sure that those ideas and those concepts got passed on because we were with the network, you know, we started this 20 years ago, basically. The networks have changed, you know, their hierarchy and um, there's all new people there. So it was, you know, really re-educating uh, the network TLC on what we were about and what our core initiatives were when we, you know, uh, really developed this. I called them immediately and, and I met with them within a day. And I was really blown away at how um, nervous they were. They really didn't want to mess it up. Yeah. Right. They just kept saying that. We, we want to bring back the old shows. We don't want to mess this up. I thought, oh, this is really good to hear. I'm liking everything I'm hearing right now. Yeah. Once we heard everyone was coming back, yes. If it was going to be us, it took all of us to do this, and we can't come back halfway. We, I think it says a lot about the show that we all wanted to come back. Exactly. Well, we've all maintained friendships throughout the years. And um, that's what I think, you know. It's really weird because TV doesn't like that usually. No, 
And, um, you know, you have inner fightings. And yes, we're like a dysfunctional family. We're like brothers and sisters, yeah. big time. But we have some new additions to the cast, too. And um, we're all thrilled of who was brought on. Uh, Kahi Lee, um, uh, Brett Tudor, uh, John Gidding, and Sabrina Soto. Um, they're great additions, and they are, are blending in well with, uh, with all of us. What's the most important advice you gave to the newbies? To sort of keep the Hang on! <laughs> Lost your door. Yeah, interesting ride. What did you remember. tell John? Because uh, John Gidding is a new designer, and he's actually Genevieve's best friend. Yeah. yeah, they're they're new to trading, but they're not new to the design television world. So they're very, you know, they're seasoned. They're seasoned and salty. But I just looked at all of them and I said, "This is not that show." This is not that show about you, you, or you. This is not that show where you show up when the camera shows up. You do the work by yourself all day, all night. And the reason that I think all of us were successful after this is because this show made us ninjas. We, there was a certain you work know? ethic you know, that we all brought to the table. And um, as television has changed in the past you know, 20 years, um, the type of uh, talent that is on these shows, um, we're not approaching it and didn't have to approach it the way we did. Uh, it was our baby, it was our ideas, and we had to bring those to the table and make them new and different and exciting I each and too, every like episode. I think too, like the work ethic and the discipline is very important, but don't you actually think that your experience of being a trading spaces designer all those years actually even made you a better designer Absolutely. by having to Absolutely. create within the boundaries of the, the strict limitations of the two days and well, at the time it was $1,000. Did any of you watch the show? <laughs> you did. Okay, yes. so you, oh, don't so know, you know what we're talking about? Okay. And now get $2,000 for each room. Yeah. $2,000 We've got a ton show. of money now. <laughs> just it was a ton. so easy to do because this show is so hard. And we're all very much, you know, we're well-trained racehorses now coming back to do this, but it's still the hardest show there is. You don't have a ghost army. There is no, like, let's call in the workers. It's us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and your neighbors that you're working with well, that you have to really trust. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the how have they don't do their homework. <laughs> they show <Dream>. up late. <laughs> how have the homeowners changed in the 10 years? Because are, are they more vocal now? Are they more knowledgeable? Absolutely how more vocal because they're more knowledgeable about design. Um, new products. You know, we, we helped forge a whole industry with the way people viewed interior design, the way they were buying products. Um, there are pro so many different products out there now that we never had in the beginning stage and the consumer is much more savvy about what good design is. So we are challenged and we're questioned, you know, a little bit more on, you know, what our design is going to be. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to do what I want to do. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, think about it, you know, 2000, there was no Pinterest. Mm. There was no GPS. On, you had no smartphone. And we watched TV totally. There was no Amazon. No. We weren't surfing as we watched television. Like, we were in it, and we were recording it with a big old, you know, tape. Um, so I'm really curious to see having a more knowledgeable, like a 3.0 audience now, um, A, how they watch, B, how they question us along the way, and C, how much more and how they're going to want it next. It's very, it's a very big experiment. Yeah, no social media either. There was no Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or any of that stuff. It's, oh, it's a we whole We had chat new boards, world. remember? Yeah, oh, I remember chat, chat rooms. boards well. Chat rooms. Have, do you guys know what chat rooms are? Okay. <laughs> they know the show, they know chat boards. And speaking of chat rooms, is that where I read Genevieve an interview you did where you said you used to get um, foot fetish club invites because oh she goes barefoot when she doesn't want to ruin her shoes in the house. Yeah. So, is that, like, how, how did that happen? <laughs> well, I have a file, a manila folder in my house from 2000 on that said, if I die, it's one of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, just, there were a lot of foot fetish people writing, mind you, because there wasn't social media, like single spaced letters that would be 10 pages. And I'm like, how much time did that take? And what were you doing while you did that? <laughs> but um, it would be, you know, the Barefoot Association of America. There is one. Um, there's something called like toe ringers. And they show up at my events barefoot. Like, I should know them, too. Like, gee, you know, in the back. And I'm, like, obviously wearing shoes. 
it's <laughs> bizarre underworld. I had no idea. But I have soccer feet. My second toe is longer. There's nothing beautiful about my feet. However, they have a, their own websites all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Go um, figure. Doug, did you have any crazy fans like that over the years? Um, yeah, nothing like her fetish right. people. That's hard to top. But uh, most yeah. people were out to get Doug, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the fireplace. We're gonna get into it. The brick uh, fireplace. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, nothing terribly crazy. Uh, I was in at a home show doing an appearance in Fort Wayne, and was stalked um, incessantly by someone. And my family was uh, had come over to see me because a native of Illinois, and. Um, you know, we had to have security around my whole family. That's the weirdest thing that's really happened to me. Yeah. Not being actors, I think people really think that there is a relationship with you, which is 900% well, or 99% To some great. extent, they really do know us. They don't know all of us, yeah. but the personalities that you see on the show, that's who we are. I mean, you you amp up a little bit of the bad boy more than you are, but, <laughs> but, but that's also a, part, a real part of you. Well, you, yes. I, I think We're not a, a lot of We're pretending to be anything. We over embellish. We know entertainment. You know, this is. I always approach this show half design, half entertainment, and try to find a blend to make that work. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to amp ourselves up a little bit um, to be I interesting. I don't. You don't. I'm just me. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> Genevieve. <laughs> well, and then let's talk about Paige because I feel like you were still the cheerleader, sort of the therapist for the homeowners, um, kind of the go-between in some circumstances. And in the premiere, which I've watched, which is amazing. Um, I mean, like you've seen it. I've seen it. You got, yes. Really? I'll hook you up with the link. We haven't seen, have seen it. Yeah. So Have it's you good. Guys seen it's it good. Too? Is it good? <laughs> no. It's very good. But Hildy um, and Doug are the designers in the first episode. Oh. And like Paige, when Hildy tells you, for instance, that her concept for a guest room is deconstructed penguin, um, you know, and you have to like play no with that. No penguins yeah. were harmed. We, we love, we love Hildy. Yeah, she's amazing. Do you have to sometimes hide your doubt, or you know, how do you sort of gauge what you're going to portray? She doesn't hide. She oh, tells yeah. them how it is. I, I, you know what? I do ask the questions that I know the audience is thinking and that and I support the homeowners asking the questions that I know they're thinking after so many years of trading spaces in so many rooms and so many Hildy rooms in fact <laughs> I I honestly I really just believe in her even her most controversial rooms I have hey on the wall I hey, loved girl. you know I it, I don't think I don't think it turned out. I actually don't think it looked very good in the end. But I thought I applaud her for taking the risk. I applaud her for doing what she thought was going to look like a um, a textured grass cloth. grass grass wallpaper, which we is a very a which is a very high no. end design. I think she thought it was going to look amazing. It it actually didn't. It looked pretty bad. But <laughs> uh, but but a lot of people would be afraid to do even a right. textured wallpaper in their house. And she pushes that boundary mm -hmm. so far that at home you might go, you know what we could do though? We could actually mm -hmm. get textured wallpaper that will work I and have this incredible look yeah. in our home. What it, the show really did to that point, I believe, is kind of opened up interior design to the masses to let them know that A they can afford to do some cool stuff, and B, they, most importantly, they deserve it. And it's that not was, just for the rich. It's not for know. the rich, and I think a lot of times people, I've, we found, we probably, the largest case study in America, we've been in so many homes, mm. and after doing like over 22 lifestyle shows, Americans especially, they don't think they deserve beautiful things. Yeah. And so it's something that I think the show helped convince that it's okay to have pretty yeah. or crazy. Or, or you just or, or you or you yeah. or different, not like your neighbor, well, yeah. you know. Yeah. So say, I, I always try to coach people to put their personality into their home so that they can make it unique. Um, my mother, when I was trying to help her, um, I was it was her living room, and I said, "Well, mom, what what do you like? Show me, you know, some pictures in a magazine." Well, I like this, and I go, "Okay, so you like French country?" I'm like, "Right? Well, yeah, but I I couldn't have that in my home." And it's like, but you like it. And so there is a, uh, um, uh, people are afraid to just go that extra mile and to like, you know, own it and say, you know, you deserve it. Well, it's almost like wearing the beautiful dress. You just don't want to be noticed maybe that much too. So it's a lot of psychology behind all of this. 
And I referenced the fireplace earlier. That's one of the most famous reveals of the original series. Oh, when that's. Doug, yes, the Doug, what, uh, she didn't want him to touch her brick exposed like fireplace, but you put a facade in front of it. So I think the Bernie he question, didn't touch it. He didn't touch it. Nope, right? I went by the letter of the law. <laughs> but I guess the question maybe the fans have is then, you know, what happens afterwards? Is it something, does the show ever help people take something down if they really don't like it? Or is that just Well, you could ask Paige because all you see yeah. from me are taillights. I mean, out of look, town. look, we are not talking about a bi Felicia situation. <laughs> But no, uh, we don't put it back. That's the big part of the risk and the jeopardy. Everything you see on Trading Spaces is real. The homeowners are really doing the work themselves with their designer. They are really doing it within the two-day time frame. They really are only spending the budget allotted, which this season is $2,000 each room. They really are spending the night in each other's house mm -hmm. so they can continue to do homework and not go home to see their room. They can't see their room until it's all finished in the end. So... Um, it's very real, that risk. So if we told them, oh, don't worry, if you don't like it, we'll put it back or fix it, well, there'd be absolutely no jeopardy whatsoever. It's a $1,000. Like, get over it, you the, know? And it's yeah. two days of work. You can fix it if you don't like it. That means it's a game. The situation with the fireplace episode, if you break the room down... The facade that I put around it was, you know, it was tongue and groove. Um, I put in wainscot that matched the wainscot in her, in her house. It looked great. It, it was it looked great. farmhouse it looked great. sconces. I mean, yeah. it was the bones of a country room that absolutely yeah. would have, if she would have just taken one moment to pause and realized she could have changed the checkered pattern and just made it navy blue. I thank whatever. God she didn't, because it was one of the best episodes yeah. Because, ever. yeah, she yeah. asked to leave the room, and then she still had her mic on, and you could hear her crying. Oh, you're shaking. You've seen yeah. it. Everyone's yeah. seen it here. Ugly, they know. belly well, cry. She but then they thought, also did say that the in her defense, what I will say, look, it turned out to be an amazing episode of Trading Spaces <laughs> for us. What I will say in her defense is, homeowners are allowed when they come on trading spaces to protect certain items in their home. Now, when you're applying, you don't want to protect too many things, but we don't want to ruin your you know, family heirloom cedar chest or something like that. We're not going to do that. So you can mention things, but you don't want to mention too many things or you won't get picked. But she wanted to protect that brick. So when she opened her eyes and saw that the in her to her eyes that mm -hmm. brick was gone, completely safe underneath... But she was so angry that she actually thought we had broken the contract. Mm -hmm. That's why she says, you guys are going to be fixing that in a little bit. You, you have but, to which, but we didn't. We actually right. didn't break the contract. And if she would have, could have taken it. She just put it, and we didn't fix it. And she was taking it down while we were still packing up cameras. Oh, and if wow. she had just slept on it. Control I always issues wish she would have just slept on it. That's like oftentimes. Not uh, on it, literally. But you know what I mean. The, the next day, and I know that there are situations of this um, from this current season, that they don't like it, okay, when we see the reveal. Then all of a sudden, the next day, when all the camera crews are out and all the lights are gone, they can see this room takes on a new, new experience. And they've had a chance to digest it. And sleep. Because yeah. they've sleep. been up sleep. all night. Yeah, well, we, we consensually exhaust them for a reason. We, you know, we want them vulnerable when they walk in and see the house. <laughs> Change is I'm really not hard. And no control is even harder yeah. for people to let and go. They think they're, is they're in, but they really got to let go to have a good time. The, and, and that's when the room turns out better is when they start to enjoy themselves. You can see it. In the Pam paint. did have control issues. No kidding. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> I, was wondering, I wonder if the, the, the neighbors remained friends, because there was definite tension. They were like, why didn't you tell them there, not to do this? <laughs> I do not know of any instance except one where the homeowners didn't remain friends after, even if it was awkward and painful when they're reunited. Was that you know? Laurie's episode, that one? Where it yeah. Was it's uh, Well, we have Crying Pam, hitting. who we've already discussed. Um, we had like Yellen Ellen. A dining room, Hildy did. And we also had angry Jessie. <laughs> and she was so upset, particularly about the color brown. Not the brown you had in the fireplace room. It was like a dark taupe. And she said the only thing she didn't want was brown. It wasn't really brown. And uh, not it was beige, it was like, like the a, rest of It was like a dark taupe. And, yeah. But, you know, here, this is a very interesting story. Well, the reveal is that she said, I don't want brown, and she ended up with this kind of dark taupe, and so she got really angry, and she said, we promised each other we'd do something cool in each other's rooms, and we did something cool in your room, and then you did this, and all I said was, I didn't want brown, and she, she stormed pushed out of her. the room, she yeah. came back in the house, she shoved her friend <laughs> to the floor, awesome. and then straddled her and started to choke her, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. and I thought she was kidding. It was full tilt Jerry Springer Jesse had different problems other than design. And 
I was like, oh my God, I'm about to be accessory to murder right now because I'm just standing here not doing anything. But I think this reveal is very telling as well because people always think that Trading Spaces has some Machiavellian agenda to destroy people's dreams. And what you need to understand in terms of the production of the show is they're, you know, logistically, these designers have to plan the room ahead of time. They must know what they're buying. They must have it shopped and ready to go before... Ish. 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 Before we trade keys, Mm -hmm. right? So oftentimes, if... And the budget is real. So if designers come across like really awesome fabric somewhere and they're like, oh my gosh, that is so cheap and I could totally use that. I love that. They'll buy it and wait for the room to put it in. Like, oh, my next episode, whatever the room is, I'm using this, right? And they build the room around it. They get it all planned. Now, and for the record, Jessie never once did she ever say she didn't like Brown. She never said it in her application. She never said it in her pre-interview over the phone. She never said it to, in the interview with the scout who came to her house. And until we showed up and we're interviewing her on camera for the show to go into the show, what do you want? What do you not want? Who are you afraid of? Blah, blah, blah. She comes out with, I hate brown. Well, the whole room is already pur- purchased. Laurie had shipped fabric from Jackson, Mississippi. It's in her SUV right now. Yeah. We're not going back on that. And we've got an amazing soundbite to build a show around, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And it was pretty. But too. we didn't go like, oh, she wow. hates brown. Hey, Lori, go buy brown. Right. Right? It was not some agenda or planned out it's thing. It's people's most intimate space. And just a slight tweak off what they thought they wanted can send someone into a mad spiral. If there's a little bit of a mental offness, <laughs> it gets even more wild and wonderful. The, but the, the fact of the we don't is, make that. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, the show is built around what your homeowners want to do for you. It's not what the homeowners who are living in the space want. And that's something that hasn't always been ingrained into, you know, the, the viewers. You know, it's supposed to be... Yeah, but you guys your... ignore the neighbors, too. Well, yeah, because we <laughs> normally we don't get enough information. And we, we get have a to video like and a short write-up about what they want, who they are, how they live. And, and they what, always say, we want neutrals and lots of yeah. storage. So you, if, if you do this, <laughs> if you listen to all these, you're going to have the same room each and every time. So we you know, take it upon ourselves to spice things up a little bit, push the envelope so that you know, people can you know, experience something new. Now, it's I, called design. I, yeah, I, tr- <laughs> I do try to find little nuggets of things in the readings and interviews to, to be able to pull from. But if I don't have anything... I've just got to make it up and do something interesting. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I've noticed is that um, you, you don't present the, like the homeowners you're working with for the redesign, you, you don't present them with the full vision right away, which seems yeah. very strategic because mm. you want them. And they're always like, I can't picture it. If I, Maybe if I could picture it, I would like this. Yeah. But it seems like you must that's be doing that for television. the drama. Yeah, that's, that's just television. Yeah. Television. And I mean, because people... we don't Because we don't tell them what to say or tell them what to think or tell, you know, any of that stuff, you know, kind of doling out the information sort of infuses the episode with its own well, built-in drama. Well, most people drama. can't imagine. That's right. why we're there in the first place. So if we paint this big picture with words, they're still not going to see it. Paint goes on the wall, the room's still naked, freak out. Right. Freak out. It's not beige. Um, but once the room gets dressed and all the things get, oh, now I get it. You know, it takes a long time. She's right. Even if, even if you explained it, even if you showed a vision board. Nah. No, people, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. it. Yeah. No. Oh, no, we have some fans in the audience. We're going to go ahead and move to the audience Q&A. We're, oh, back here. Hi. Um, so I'm curious. Considering the cult following that home improvement shows have on social media, are you guys at all prepared for that? Not prepared in the least. <laughs> no. Terrified. <I'm> super prepared. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to handle I'm it all l- for us. Armed and loaded <laughs> on social media. I'm. I'm. D- I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's a beast we have not had to encounter with this particular show. I've had to deal with it in other situations, and she's a master at it. She's just really good at it. She's just fun I, to follow. I'm, you should follow her. I'm actually uh, f- uh, finding it interesting that I can now go on social media and quickly, you know, defend myself if I need to. You know, because before, you know, we just had the little chat room. So I'm, I've, t- I've had a lot of fun in the past couple of weeks with the teases of the um, old shows coming back to say, well, now wait. This is why I did it, or I didn't have that information. So it's, it's fun as well. 
It's like hashtag Doug's defense. I think you need yeah. to work on like that. that. You can steal defense that. Fund. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I had a core. I had a core of uh, women. They were called the Triple D's. Okay. <laughs> Honest to God. I haven't heard about this. Divas defending Doug, and they started in the chat rooms, and uh, so they would go on and fight my battles. So I hope that they come back, you know, in a new way. Divas defending Doug. Amazing. We want them back. Um, another question. Hi. Thanks so much for being here. Um, since you guys work so closely with each other, what's your favorite thing about each other? I love, I mean, I've, I mean, we've all been doing this for over 20 years now on so many different shows. I think there's a magic chemistry between this particular group of people. It doesn't matter if we go to the moon and build a house. When we get there, there'll be somebody who will ask us about Trading spaces. <laughs> Nothing else we do. I did the White House for eight years. It doesn't matter. Trading spaces. <laughs> and I think a lot of that is we honestly, genuinely, authentically care about each other, stay in touch with each other, and came up together. We grew up together. So there's a love that you can't force. Or in authenticity is really everything, especially in this world right now. And we got it. There was a um, years ago when... Uh, show first came out, there was talk that we should have gotten an Emmy for casting, you know, the people who did it. Because there needs to be. Is there an, an Emmy for casting? No, there's not an Emmy for no, casting. No, because, you know, the core the core group of people are all for so casting. diverse oh. and bring something new and interesting to the table each and every episode. Um, there's no duplicates, you know, it's all unique people. The other thing about this group is that it's like when you go into a room and you're all alphas you know that shit's gonna get taken care of. And when I'm with my guys here, I know that everyone's good. Everyone can do the job from start to finish. There's no weak link. And that is like, oh, cause every other show ever, you have to do more than what you're supposed to do because people just wanna show up for the camera, mm -hmm. you know? And that's not what we think this job is about. Exactly. I think it morphed into that later, and I'm really proud that coming back and bringing the show back, mm -hmm. that all of the people who were part of the cast, and we definitely brought the, the newbies, as it were, even though they're all seasoned designers. Right. The, but we love to call them newbies because it's just part of the hazing process. Yes. Yes. Well, um, kind of initiation. I love that they are really they're also on board for that. Like, no, this is, this is going back old school. I know this is how design shows are done now with art departments who come in and they do all this stuff, but we're, we're bringing this back, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. we can. And yeah, and it's inspiring. I, it blows my mind what they do. I mean, we joke, you know, about how, you know, my job is just go in and criticize them, but I, I really don't feel the that way at head. all. I, I do that for comic effect and for drama, and I am literally floored every single time. I can't believe that it's, you know, 17 years and there's still, like, how She's did you think She's also there till three in the morning laying wallpaper with us and painting. Like, okay. she cares more mm -hmm. about our designs sometimes, I think, than we do. What, and that's not normal either. What I love most <laughs> about Paige is that she thoroughly loves each and every room I've ever done. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> Doug. <laughs> Except one. Except one. <laughs> and that might be a teaser for this season. Oh, really? But, um, the most controversial. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fireplace I, controversy? I, I this is exciting. I can't give too much away. I'm not giving anything away. But she did not like my room at all. Oh, I can't wait to see yeah. this. It's going to be good. <laughs> um, we have another question from the audience. I, um, no, not at all. Okay. Hey, listen. Mostly at all. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. We get carried away. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, so as designers, do you uh, ever find it a challenge to make, some, uh, make a room look uh, nice versus make it comfortable or practical for whoever's using it? No. <laughs> Form and function have to marry for it to be design. Otherwise, it's just decorating, right? And that's not what we are. So we're thoroughly trained in this. I will not be able to help you with your math paper, but I can always make something comfortable and pretty in a matter of minutes. Like, we have to be able to do that. So no, I don't, I don't feel like, is that hard for you? No, no, it's not. Well, the, the hard part is trying to make it as nice and functional with the budget that we're given. We all have design, well, except for you, hon. We all have- I have no- have, <laughs> We all have design businesses of our own. 
And it is a completely different business than the business of television design. You know, so we were forced to make some choices to make the room, to pull it off with the budget. Um, but our ultimate goal is, as Jen, um, Jen said, it's form meets function. But it would be disingenuous to say, you know, or to not admit that the series as a whole does have designers like Hildy would be a great example. I mean, everybody wants to know, like, how am I supposed to live in that? You know, the cardboard furniture or this or that or whatever. There is, you know, she's been, frankly, if you if you ask me, she's been brave enough to take the fall, to push that visual aesthetic mm -hmm. far enough that definitely helped put us on the map, but also just hopefully is making your brain expand a little further so that in your attempt to also remain comfortable and functional in your home, you will also push the aesthetic boundary further than you might otherwise. She's our avant-garde. Yeah. And absolutely. we all need that. And one, the thing about her design, because um, I'll, I'll defend her to the core, is that most of it comes from objects, from museums, and things. The cardboard furniture... That, that we've seen that in museums before. Um, she also didn't build it, did she? Didn't she order it? I mean, it exists. Yeah, she, yeah, she ordered it. Yeah. Um, I, I always say, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> she didn't think of it. <laughs> when, if, if if we, you know, go this high, okay, and it might be a little out of the box, what we're trying to do is take people who are down here at this level and get them up to here. If you can meet, you know, some of us halfway, like Hildy, you know, or even me sometimes. Meet us halfway, you're going to have a big change in your life, for the better. The show is wonderful. It's back Saturday night on TLC. You've seen it. I'm so jealous I've seen you it. said to me. Uh, <laughs> we'll make up afterwards. But again, thank you all for being here. Anyone want to give one last plug, one last tease before we sign just off? Watch. Just, yeah. Flip page, do a good plug. Come on, you're oh, so good. Uh, yeah. This is your job. This is how you oh, make your money. It. Watch we Trading just make Spaces things Saturday nights on TLC. <laughs> Definitely. Kay, if you don't watch, we don't get a second season. So it's all in your hands, everybody. Oh, and if you don't have cable, mm. you should get the app TLC Go, and you can stream it on any device. That's right. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us.